Hey guys, Rod here again. And look, in today's video, what I'd like to show you is a simple one bed aquaponic system that I built for a client. Some of the site selection challenges that I had, and I'll show you some of the tricks and how I overcome some of these challenges for that client. I'm just going to install the pump for this small system that you can see behind me. And look, I've got, there's a couple of issues here. And one is that it's actually sitting on a path. So I've put it on a path. It's, it's the best location that we had. So it's on a path. However, the path actually is on an angle. And when the path's on an angle, you'll see that it's just gonna slope forward. So I need to put a bit of timber or something retrospectively, because uh, this thing's full of water as well. So it's gonna be a bit tricky. I'll have to use a jack, uh, car jack. So I'll use a kangaroo car jack and I'll jack it up and and we'll fix this thing. And what I'm also gonna do is install the pump uh, on 25 mil, a uh, 20 mil pipe actually. We'll use 20 mil pipe and 2,500 litre pump. So that'll be ample for this, this system, just a one bed system. And you can see actually how it's bending at the bottom there. You can see how the weight of the water has actually bent the bottom of the tank. So we're gonna fix that, no problem. I'm I'll use my kangaroo jack here. Now there's a couple of parts that you'll need in your system and if you have a look down below here uh, you just need a couple of these guys. So these are, um, these are simple fittings, tap fittings. One of these guys which is a T-joiner and two elbows, that's all. Doesn't take a lot, don't need too much and a, just 20 mil pipe as well. All right, another thing you'll need is to get yourself a joiner, just a simple joiner. And the other thing you'll need is a screw fitting that's gonna go into our pump. And what I also do is add a joiners to it, 20 mil joiner, put one over the other like so, and then I've glued that together. Now that's gonna be a really beautiful fitting for us. And yeah, you could purchase the same thing. I couldn't find one, so I had to uh, join them together myself and glue them. And that simply just screws straight in. Yeah, look, sometimes you've got no choice and you have to use the jack. So uh, this is the kangaroo jack I was referring to. There it is. And I've just wedged it down underneath. And it's just a matter of just moving the handle up and down. And it's quite difficult for put the camera so I'll have to put the camera down but essentially just jack it up like so. There's all sorts of ways to cycle a system and an old trick is to use an old dead fish or an old dead prawn to start that bacteria process so that's what we're going to do today. Now I know it sounds a little gross it sounds a little crazy but um, hey we want to kick off the bacteria it's going to do that and then you can fish them out later if you really want to. Alright our next thing to start off the system we're going to use Charlie Carp just a capful and that'll add a little bit of fertilizer into the system as well and kickstart all the bacteria. It's just dead carp. Carp are a big problem in Australian rivers. They've just been sustainably harvested, captured, killed and mulched up into a bottle. So we'll use that. Just a capful every couple of days. And that should be enough. And look, Charlie Carp is a, a natural fertilizer, all-purpose fertilizer. It um, says on the front here, stimulates the growth, boosts plant immune system, improves the soil. Well, we're not using soil, but what it, the biggest feature is it really is helping our rivers and creeks. It'll kick our bacteria into action and it's really gonna stimulate the bacterial process and that's what we want. So it's gonna do the work for us. In any new system as well, I just grab some seeds from my system. When I set up systems for other people, I've just got a whole heap of munched up tomatoes here and one chili. Just a lot of seed, it's wet. But what I'll do is just throw it straight into the gravel, into the grow bed, and that'll be enough to get the seeds germinating. Um, the Charlie carp in there and a bit of water from my pond is totally enough to get everything growing. Doesn't need much. Yeah. Push it down into that top layer, get it in. 
people around. Wherever it lands. Some will, some won't. So what? Uh, let's just get it growing. Two weeks old and uh, it's working well. It's working really well. Have a look at the tomatoes. I put seed everywhere two weeks ago. All popping up, I'm very pleased to see. Fantastic. She's gonna have a lot of tomatoes, that's for sure. All looking well, no leaks. No leaks anywhere. It's all balanced, it's all level. No drama, hasn't sunk any further. And I'm really pleased to see so many seedlings growing around here. Absolutely phenomenal. Really good to see. So I'm just cycling Laurie's system here. Um, the way I do it is a three week cycle. And um, after three weeks we had the fish. We've already added the bacteria, we've already added seeds, we've already added some plants. And um, everything's really growing well. So I'm really pleased. Fish next week. All right, so this is week four of Laurie's system and get a load of that growth in here. You might remember a couple of weeks ago I just spread some seed around and look what's happened here. So um, I'm really really impressed. There's way too many too many tomatoes but it's really it's it's all working so they're all sinking roots down. The biology is all happening and that's what we want. You can always pull a few of these out later and put them in other systems or anything like that but it's really important at the moment to just get it all moving. So the bacteria colonizing and that's what's going on now so i'll just test i'll just test the water now and see if it's it's cycled appropriately and if it is fantastic all right so let me just get out my trusty kit here this is the api kit freshwater master kit that's the chart let's just test the ph always shake it uh, just to make sure no problem there, shake it for a good 20 seconds, even longer really, but right and I'll just get a bit of water, should just mention too, just fill it up to that line, now I've gone over, alright so just flick it out until you get a good line's worth, and just make sure you wash that lead as well, because a residual from the last test could be under there, and that'll wreck the results, we don't want that, alright so, shield proof lock, alright, the cap. Three drops. One, two, three, and a bit. All right, it says it. Actually, if you're ever in in worry, always says it on the label. All the different tests. Put the cap on. All right, so that's that's pretty good. It's just a little bit under under the uh, neutral. So it's probably this is a little bit faded as well. So it's probably around the 6.6. .6 pH so that's good now just to I will bring that up a little bit by adding a little bit of bicarb soda but first I'll test a few other things as well okay so let's just test for ammonia ammonia's got two bottles bottle one bottle two now, I'm not expecting too much ammonia in here let's have a look bottle two the bottle one says eight drops let's do that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's no fish in here, we're not expecting it too high, but it is a, a biological system and we have been cycling, so it's great. We've got, got about 0 0.50 parts per million, which is fantastic. That's good, it just shows that the bacteria is working and the, the biology is, um, is coming to life. Okay, let's do nitrates again. There's two bottles for nitrate. Put the pH away. Okay, so do the shaking. Okay, so nitrates, 10 drops, bottle one. All 
that. Bottle two. Ten drops. Okay. And nitrate, so I'm expecting a little bit of nitrate in there. Which there is. So that's a little bit orange there, but I think we've got five parts per million. Now, usually I'll just let it sit because it will go a little bit darker. So I'll do that for the nitrate. Meanwhile, we do nitrates. And I'll do it in a different tube because we're letting the other one sit. Wash that out a bit. Yep, good. Get to the line. Now, I'm not expecting a lot of nitrites. So let's see, it should come out blue. Five drops. Shouldn't change too much. If all is well. Voila. So, yeah, there should be zero nitrite. So, it is a balanced system. It looks pretty good. Everything is working as it should. And if I look at the nitrates there, it is going a little bit darker as I speak. So it's probably at 10 parts per million, which is good. So if you've got a lot of fish in there, you can expect a much higher nitrate level. But it shows me that it, the, the, bio, the biological system is working well. And, it, and as it's a natural system, bacteria colonizing, and the plants are taking up the nutrients. Get a load of the Brazilian spinach there. All looking good, all looking very healthy. Okay, so what I'll just do is just to increase the pH, so I'll just add a little bit of bicarb. Bicarb soda, I'll just use this one, it's about $2.20 at our local Coles, very cheap. Normally I would measure, but this example I'll just put that much in. <laughs> Only need a little bit. You don't want to change the water too much. You don't want to rise it or, or allow it to fall too much. Actually, I'll just put a little bit more in. I'll swish it around. All right, done. And then we add some fish. And now that you've seen me add a pump to this system, add some seeds, cycle the system, and even tweak it and jack it up, you might be thinking, hey, I can build this for myself. And I know you can too, and I want you to do it. So I want you to turn one of these IBC tanks that I've got right behind me into something like this here. This is another system that I've got going on in the moment. And if you'd like to do that, check out this video because it's a step-by-step -step process. It shows you everything you need to know, and I know you'll enjoy that next. So until then, happy aquaponics. I wish you all the success in the world.